good evening, everyone. I'm Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. We are seeing partly uh, cloudy conditions across uh, the DMV, also tracking a few snow showers for the Mountain State region. But our weather team main focus is record breaking warmth back into the 90s. I'll show you when coming up. The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. You're watching DC News Now at 9. And coming up tonight, changes are coming to Loudoun County Schools after two sexual assaults, which sent shockwaves across the country. We're live with a new plan that will change how school resource officers interact with students. Why are you defacing the black, black history in the DC? All new at 9 in DC, video of a man spraying over a mural of a black activist sparking outrage. The man who filmed this footage tells DC News Now why it's such a slap in the face to an entire community. And the Washington Commander is closer to getting new ownership, the big new step in the bidding process, and what still has to happen before the Dan Snyder era finally ends. Good Monday evening, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Thasmeen Mafus. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Flanagan. All new tonight, Loudoun County Public Schools is working to make changes to how any future sexual assaults on school property are handled. Yeah, so previous failures led to multiple indictments by a special grand jury, and now a federal investigation. A Northern Virginia Bureau reporter Max Marcilla joining us live tonight from LCPS headquarters in Ashburn and Max. This marks the latest in what's been a series of discussions since that special grand jury report was released. Yeah, and some of those discussions have led to policy changes. Tonight, we got a look at what could change for the officers stationed inside Loudoun County schools and how it could affect your students. The fallout from two sexual assaults in two different high schools by the same student put a spotlight on the issue in Loudoun County. As frustrations boiled over at school board meetings and eventually the school's previous superintendent and spokesperson were indicted. But for all the turmoil in the past, Monday's meeting between elected leaders in county government and on the school board, as well as staff from the county sheriff's office and Leesburg police was a step towards solutions. And that is an area that we've strengthened um, is communication between us, even in, in areas that's not required. It's not a requirement of us to make the notification. We're now making notifications. The group met to propose changes to the rules guiding school resource officers. The five elected officials voting to add a requirement for trauma informed training for law enforcement. You all are for more training. I think this is this will be beneficial. That training will be specific to interviewing minors who were victims of sexual assault. Also discussed when a student can be questioned. Right now, SROs can stop, question, and interview students without an okay from parents or the school's admin. I mean, you just need to watch the movie about the Central Park Five. That's the images that I have in my head when I see a blanket statement. Supervisor Julie Briskman wanted limits on when that can happen. It's a discussion committee members agreed needed to be had, though some pointed out there are instances where parental consent should not be needed. There are students who bring guns to school and start shooting. Um, I think law enforcement needs the flexibility to deal with situations that are serious and immediate without asking for parents' permission. And tonight we're also learning the Loudoun County Sheriff's Office does feel it is equipped and well staffed enough to handle the amount of sexual assault cases it receives, not just uh, here in the schools, but across the county. But it does say that if the numbers rise just a little bit more, they could go to the board asking for more money and more positions. Reporting live in Loudoun County, Max Marcella, DC News Now. And new developments tonight. The Washington Commanders are one step closer to getting new ownership. The NFL has received terms of the deal between a group led by Josh Harris and current owner Dan Snyder. Again, this is a $6 billion bid. The NFL will now take a look at it and either send it back for changes or approve the deal. The next step after this, the owners would have to approve the deal at the next owners meeting. That is scheduled for the end of May. And new at 9, police are searching for the person or people responsible for a shooting in the Comer area of Fairfax County. So a man was found shot multiple times near Bellevue Drive and Glen Carlin Drive in between Seven Corners and Bailey's Crossroads. Now this was around 6 p.m. We're told two men were seen leaving the area. Police do not believe this was a random attack. 
Of course, we are getting an update. We're working to get more information for you on the victim's condition, but we're told the injuries are life threatening. Another top story we're following tonight, also in Fairfax County. A grand jury has decided not to indict the Fairfax County police officer who shot and killed an unarmed black man near Tyson's Corner Mall. And so you'll remember the shooting that happened in February. Officers chased Timothy Johnson into the woods and shot him over a pair of sunglasses he allegedly stole. Annalisa Gale is outside the Fairfax County Police Department with a look at what happens next after a decision that surprised prosecutors. These documents basically spell out that the grand jury did not find enough probable cause to indict Officer Shiflet. Now, prosecutors say this is an outcome that they did not expect. Commonwealth's attorney Steve Descano was scheduled to hold a press conference on Monday with an update on Timothy Johnson's case. But that changed after a grand jury decided not to indict the officer who shot and killed Johnson. Johnson was accused of stealing a pair of sunglasses in February. The only thing they knew was that he was black and male. His interaction with police before his death was caught on body camera video. His family has described the shooting as an execution. We want to warn you, the video you are about to see can be hard to watch. Going into the woods. Through the woods. Get on the ground. Stop reaching. In a statement to DC News Now, Descano says he can't say for sure what information was conveyed to the grand jurors, but in light of the outcome, he's evaluating all options on the path forward. We did reach out to the attorney for the Johnson family. So far, they did not have a comment. Outside the Fairfax County Courthouse, Annalisa Gale, DC News Now. And since 2005, there have been 52 officer-involved shootings involving Fairfax County police officers 47 times. A Commonwealth's attorney found that there was no basis for criminal liability and only one time did a special grand jury issue an indictment. Now those charges stem from the 2013 shooting of an unarmed Springfield man, John Greer. Officer Adam Torres was charged with second degree murder. He later pleaded guilty to manslaughter and served 10 months in jail. Now worth noting here, it took nearly two years for the indictment to be handed down. And happening now at 9, a burn ban is in effect across West Virginia. Governor Jim Justice issued it today in the wake of wildfires and especially dry weather. The order bans outdoor burning, including campfires, until further notice. Liquid fuel gas grills are excluded from the ban. All right, we're also tracking increased fire risk around the district tomorrow, so let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. And Janessa, it's going to remain dry for the next couple of days. Yeah, we have little precip that's in uh, the forecast. We're in drought conditions, and really that continues from the start of 2023. We're about three to five inches below our average for this time of year. So what you have is kind of this ingredient uh, where relative humidity is down to 15 to about 25 percent gusty winds that are picking up and then the, you have that lack of rain. So that fire watch for all of the DMV will go into place uh, tomorrow afternoon, extending into your evening. I do think they will extend this for the rest of the week. I'm not tracking rain until about Saturday, folks. And so really it will be beneficial rain once we get it here in the district. There are a few spots out towards uh, the Alleghenies, Kaiser into Cumberland. We are tracking a spot shower for tonight uh, due to a very weak disturbance that's going to cross uh, the area. It's very limited in nature. And so as temperatures continue to cool off south of 68 tonight, a few snowflakes. Yeah, they're back in the forecast for the Mountain State region. I am forecasting this zone right here just to the uh, east of 95 Waldorf into Lexington Park. Could see a scattered uh, shower here in uh, the next hour or so. And it's uh, due to uh, this larger storm system that's providing some lake enhanced snow off of Lake Michigan into uh, Lake Erie. So you can see greater Cleveland into uh, PA. They're dealing with some snowfall and some of those uh, snow bands, uh, snow squalls will make its way across areas of Western Maryland. Let's walk our four legged friend uh, tonight under partly cloudy conditions by that midnight hour. Temperatures going to be hovering in the lower to middle uh, 50s. Hey, we are tracking record breaking warmth for uh, this week. I'll show you when coming up. And new tonight, outrage on social media after a man is caught on video defacing a mural of a prominent black figure. Now it happened Sunday night at the Paul Robeson mural on U Street. And that's where our Marielle Carbone joins us live tonight. And Marielle, a lot of people online are calling this an attack on the black community. 
Yeah, that's right. And that is because of what this mural stands for. Paul Robeson uh, was a black historical figure and this mural here, it's on U Street, which is also known as Black Broadway because of its history as an area for black businesses and entertainment. Now, Chris and Fesmeen, this is not the first time that this particular mural has been tagged, but it is the first time it's gotten this much attention. Why are you defacing the black, black history in the This is the video now sparking outrage in the district. As a young man spray paints over a part of the Paul Robeson mural on U Street. I mean, it was very upsetting. Those murals are so important. It represents uh, not only D.C. culture, black culture. Jason Taylor took the video Sunday night. He called over police, but says the man left on a skateboard. Re that representation that is so important. That's why it's so disheartening. The mural, which was commissioned in 2015, shows a timeline of Robeson's life, who was an athlete, actor, and activist. These photos, shared by Art Block DC, which created the mural, show what it used to look like. I'm not mad. The, the fact that it's it was recorded, it's, be, it's becoming, it's more sensational. Art director Corey Lee Stower says this is not the first time the mural has been tagged. I know exactly what the situation is. It's a young person Person, they're out trying to get theirs. They're not thinking about anybody else. I'm upset, of course, but I understand that sometimes these things happen. Abdul Rahim Mohammed is the founder of the Hung Tao Choi Mei Leadership Institute, which runs part of the building where the mural is. He spent years pushing to have it painted. He was before Dr. King. He was before Malcolm X. He doesn't believe the tagging was motivated by racism, but understands why the black community is so outraged. Because it's hurt. And when we see something happen uh, to uh, even the image you know, of a black man, um, we want to fight back. Now, Muhammad says the mural, it will be restored in some form, maybe entirely redone. And Chris and Thazmin, uh, Sauer says it's also sparking a conversation about how you make sure you maintain artwork like this and uh, ensuring that there's grant money for the upkeep. Reporting live on U Street, I'm Ariel Carbone, DC News Now. Mariel, thank you. All new tonight at 9, a warning for women comes after alarming charges are filed against a general manager of the Potomac Shores Golf Club in Dumfries, Virginia. Police say Craig Lucky used his phone camera to film women in bathroom stalls. Lucky is facing several charges tonight. Police say he may have been doing this on and off for the past several months. An employee at the golf club saw the phone actively recording last week. Police traced it to Lucky, who was subsequently arrested. And Metro, Metro is warning riders about major summer construction on the orange, silver and green lines. Now the work starts May 12th and will have rolling service impacts for the next couple of months. Now the work will start with the Chevrolet Minnesota Avenue station. Free shuttle bus service will be available when stations are closed. Now riders should plan ahead and give themselves extra travel time.